Hi, um, I'm Ave. I run Ave Rivera Studio, or my website is averivera.com. And I am a ceramic artist, and I doodle a lot, make illustrations, all that fun stuff. And today's video is all about pre-orders. Pre-orders are a great way for a maker business to operate simply because you know the thing that you make is going to end up in a home. <laughs> so you're not making anything and wondering, is someone gonna buy this? Does someone like this? Will I sell it? You already did, so check. It also allows you to collect the money ahead of time and then that way you can kind of just, if you're an introvert like me, you can hide away in your basement studio <laughs> and just spend a month or two making things for the world. I also think pre-orders can be um, less stressful in terms of coming up with new designs and ideas, uh, less photography, um, less writing and back-end work in terms of like all the listings, all the copy for that on your website. It's much less of that. As long as your customers don't mind waiting, it's a great way to go. And if you don't mind the pressure of uh, knowing that people are waiting, <laughs> uh, it's a great way to go. Some ways you can manage that pressure is being open and honest about your process, letting the customer know. Like for example, for me, it takes about two months. Uh, six to eight weeks is what I say my turnaround time is because I know it'll take me at least two weeks to fill the kiln and then um, that way, because I am collecting maybe about three kilns worth of work, um, I know that I have a backup firing in case something goes wrong and um, I can manage what fits in my kiln a little bit better. Some other batch process type stuff might also benefit from this type of thing. Um, if you only wanna manage what fits in your kiln once, then obviously just uh, collect a lot less orders, set a limit. Let's say only 30 mugs fit in your kiln, only sell 25, just to like make sure, <laughs> make sure that there's room. You can also share your process on Instagram. I think people uh, get excited and um, it opens their eyes to what you do and why it takes a long time. And they're excited to see their thing go from a little blob of clay into a fully, a fully formed mug. <laughs> um, so sharing your process and being honest, sending customers updates is the best way to kind of manage that. And also know, because you said up front, it is going to take that long, they already know and they're okay with it. Just, just gotta get used to that feeling. And trust me, I know it can be a little bit daunting to feel like, oh my gosh, I got all these things and now all these people are waiting, but it'll, it'll be fine. So the first steps in doing this pre-order, let's say, call it a launch, I guess. But the first step is to make sure that you have all the materials that you need. Do you have enough clay? Do you have all the glazes for the designs that you plan on doing? Um, do you have the tools that you need? Anything else that's gonna run out? Make sure you have enough. Like, let's say you're doing beads and bracelets. Do you have all the beads for all the different designs that you wanna do? Double check your inventory. Make sure you have enough materials in stock. Especially now that things take a long time to ship and you just wanna be ready, you know? The next step is deciding which designs that you want to use. Um, I like to use past designs uh, because then I know that, I know their history. I know if they've sold well, um, did people like it? Are people wanting you to make it again? I get most of the comments on Instagram and Facebook. Sometimes people will email me. Um, it's a lot easier to make these things in a big batch versus just making them one or two here and there because the more you do the same thing over and over again, you, you start to build muscle memory. So I like to look at past things and I also like to make sure that I know that for myself, I know I won't get tired of making the same thing 
over and over and over again. So the dice mugs, I've made a bunch and I know, <laughs> I know that I won't get tired of it. Um, I did not do in this latest round the rainbow ones because the rainbows on the dice take significantly longer than just like black or like a simple straight color. And I also didn't do the gold because I didn't want to wait on a third firing um, for these, these mugs. So even for myself, I'll make things as simple as possible. Um, just knowing what are your motivations and what's your drive like, just, it's a self care thing, you know, just to make sure that you're only making what you feel confident and comfortable making. And I know I mentioned it, but I'll just say it again. What fits in your kiln and how quickly do you fill it up? Um, so for my kiln, I fit anywhere between 30 to 40, maybe 50 mugs and cups. Sometimes these big ones too. Um, so 30 to 50 things fit in there. And I know I wanted to fire uh, between August and September. I want to fire the kiln through a cycle, meaning the bisque fire and the glaze fire, about three times. And that feels about normal for, for my production speed. Um, so knowing that within the two months I'll fire three cycles, that kind of helped me decide how much of each um, mug design I would offer. Doesn't always work out perfect because um, depending on how you like to stack your kiln, it could make things a little bit different or you might end up with odd spaces. But because the holiday season is just around the corner, I know I can fill those spaces with either ornaments or extras of this mug or any other um, fall ideas like pumpkin things <laughs> any other ideas I can just fill the fill the spaces in with with those types of things so I know it will take me about a month if I like go hard and do this as quick as possible like I can do it in a month but that's why I set it to two months because I don't want to burn out and I think it's a very common problem amongst makers and artists. We don't, we should not be burning out. We deserve time off like the weekends and nights. Um, so that way I'm not in the studio, you know, from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. straight working. That's how I burned out last holiday season. So I am very, very much avoiding that. So keep your expectations realistic and comfortable. If that means you're only gonna make like 10 pre-order spots, then that's it, 10's it. You gotta take care of you. Just to make sure I reiterate, self-care, comfortable, realistic timelines, take time off to take care of you. I mean, I'm still putting in a 40 to 50 hour work week, but I'm still, you know, playing Dungeons and Dragons with my friends. I still watch TV with my husband. Uh, I still play Animal Crossing. I still have most weekends off. Most of the time it's like one day off a week, but still, I'm still taking time off for myself. Okay, so now that you've taken stock of your emotions and your materials, um, the next step is to make your listings. So the great thing about pre-orders is I bet you already have some of these listings typed out. You already have the photographs done. So now you can like use those photos and those words and all you have to do is add what your turnaround time is and it, let's say you want to offer the same thing but like in a bigger size or a smaller size, you can and that's it. Those listings, using what you've already done, putting that work to use again makes it uh, less wasteful, you know what I mean? Because if you're only making one-of-a-kind things every time you have to take a picture of it and then list it online, um, you're spending all of that work taking those photos and editing those photos and only using it once. Here's a way that you can use all of that work again. Okay, so now that you've decided your turnaround time, you've picked which listings that you've already done before in the past, already have decided those things, now is your chance to promote it. Say that 
on such and such dates, I'll be taking in pre-orders of this mug, whether it's one mug design or five mug designs. You can spend about a week, maybe two weeks, promoting it on Instagram. Um, if you have a really big following, maybe you don't need you know, one or two weeks of promotion. A small to medium sized following, even for what I have, I usually like announce it about a week out in advance to make sure people know that this is the day that I'm collecting pre-orders information. And then in my case, I like to leave up those listings on my website for the weekend, pretty much. Like I list them on Friday um, and then by Monday, I took them off my website. I was just like, that's it, I'm not gonna take in anymore because now I can take that information, organize it, and I don't have to look back at my computer to be like, oh, did I get another order? And it won't throw off my plans of what I'm firing in my kiln. For example, I did this before where I would just leave a pre-order listing up at the time I had Etsy. And let's say I got three orders in on July 1st, okay? So if I got those three orders on July 1st, I'm like, sweet, I'm gonna start making those. I'm making them by July 10th, my kiln is ready to be filled and I'm ready to fire it. I fire the bisque fire. And then by July 12th, I get another order for one mug. Now that one mug has to wait for all my other, you know, from all my other things to finish and wait for more things to fire it. So instead of, you know, leaving it open, it throws off your timeline. So I don't leave it open. I collect all the information once and then I shut it off until I'm ready to collect again. Then that way you can manage your timeline for what you have already collected. Let's say you don't meet your goal but that's okay. I would still recommend, like especially for potters, I would still recommend to stop collecting at some point, whether it's before your bisque fire, that's probably a good time to stop collecting information. Then that way your timeline isn't completely thrown off. Unless if you're firing kilns left and right perpetually and you have more than one kiln, <laughs> you do you. you. You can do that too. So now that you've collected all that information, you've made all your sales, you've took the listing down so that way you're not, you know, interrupted for your workflow. Now, you can take all that information and put it into a spreadsheet. I like to use, you know, the Mac version of Excel, which is numbers. You can use Google Sheets, whichever, or if you want to handwrite it, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, this is what mine looks like. And I color coded it with markers. I mean, I'm sure you can do that on the computer too, but I like markers. Um, and I just, you know, color coded the different sizes that I'm making. And then these are the different glaze, um, the different glaze colors that I'm doing. And then these are what the mugs are gonna say. And I also included where I'm shipping in case I want to prioritize uh, the international orders because they're gonna take so long to ship out. I will probably try to make all of the international orders before I finish up all of the, um, you know, United States orders. Is it obnoxious? Yes. And I have the order numbers on there just in case the customer reaches out to me. Like I had one person say, oh, I made a mistake. I wanted it to say uh, roll for initiative instead of roll the dice. So I was able to like look it up on my spreadsheet, write my notes, and I emailed that customer back. After you finish making everything, now you can start shipping things out. Um, as you ship things out at whatever different stages, you can add little check boxes for the different stages that things need to go through. I find having check boxes next to things is really fun and helpful. After you ship out all of your pre-orders, then you can touch the money and only then would I say to spend that money. I use that as my motivator to get things done as quickly as possible because any money I collect, I need to know that like, also I collected money for taxes and I collected money for shipping. I am not going to touch all of this money that I collected in until after the package has arrived to its location. 
that's when I will, you know, feel like I've made a profit. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's helpful to not touch that money until after everything is done, simply because one, it's a motivator, and two, I don't know my shipping costs beforehand, even though I know I charged an appropriate amount of shipping. Either way, I just would not spend that money until after things have shipped out. Cool. So if that was helpful, uh, let me know in the comments or if you do things a little bit differently or have any other tips about collecting pre-order info or running your shop in a way that is pre-orders making shipping, you can let me know in the comments. Um, hopefully this was helpful for you, give you some ideas on different ways you can earn a living making things that you love to make. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want, if this was helpful, if you liked it. Okay, cool. Bye.